Good Tuesday morning. This is Tracy L. James, your business and motivation coach. And of course, I am back in my inbox. Thank you so much to all of you who've been sending me your questions. Check your inbox because I've sent some responses. But today, I'm excited because I get the opportunity to share about something that is near and dear to my heart, and that is motivation. I've got several questions about how to motivate your team to do more. And so I'm going to share six ways that you can motivate your team. The first is to create a collaborative environment. Often teams aren't motivated and engaged because they don't feel that their ideas or their perspective is respected and appreciated. So creating a dialogue and a process where you can hear back and get feedback from your team will enable you to start to build this collaborative environment. So instead of getting in this managing format of do this, do that, do this, do the other, you need to get in a, a, a process in place that you're able to really build collaboration within your team so that everyone feels engaged and involved. Number two, provide encouragement. Sometimes it's just a simple word of good job. I like the way you talked to that customer today. I like how you handled that problem and that issue when you got it resolved. Small things can have big impact. Sometimes people just need a pat on the back. It's not always about a raise. It's not always about a promotion. Sometimes it's about appreciation. So show appreciation to your team on a consistent basis and do it fairly. Look for the good when you're out with your team so that you're able to have things to share with them that you can encourage them on and not always be correcting. Keep it balanced. Number three is taking the time to truly develop your team. As you get to know your team, you'll learn who, ha who has what strengths and who has what weaknesses. We well, need to continue to develop your team. You need to do your best to hone their, their, their strong skill sets, but at the same time, try to minimize any effects of their weaknesses and begin to develop them so that they're able to be better employees and ultimately be able to grow in their careers. Number four, avoid micromanaging. Now, let's understand, everyone does not function well in a micromanaging environment. Everyone does not like to have feel like they have somebody over their shoulder talking to them and telling them what to do every step of the way. Now, if you have a new employee and you're trying to get them up to speed, that's understandable. You will need to do some micromanaging early on until that person is more comfortable doing their position. But at some point, you have to release and let that person do their job. Because what happens is people don't, see, when you micromanage, a person doesn't think you trust that they know what they're doing. You have to show your employees that they that you trust that they have the skill set to do the job that they've been hired to do. So you have to delegate it and take hands off. All right? Remember that. Now, number five, taking the time to get to know your team. Have conversation with your team. If you need to talk to an employee about an issue that you need to pull them to your office, that's one thing. But I'm talking about having a conversation with your team. Actually taking a moment while they're working and having a conversation. Connecting with them on a more personal level, finding out about them, their life, their family, their goals, their, you know, what they have inside of them that may not have been tapped yet. You won't know until you have that conversation. So create that open line of communication so you're able to share back and forth. As they share, you share. And then you'll be able to really build the trust and build a relationship with your team. And lastly, and this probably is more important than all of the rest. The ultimate thing is to lead by example. If you want your team to be motivated, you've got to be motivated. So being a great leader starts with leading yourself. So being able to lead and motivate you will inspire and motivate your team. So it, I'm not saying to put on this fake facade, put on this mask and pretend to be something you're not. But being motivated to do a great job day in, day out, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what problems or issues you are faced with, will show your team how you, they need to do things, how they need to handle things. And you create this culture that is motivated and positive and focused on solutions and not, not excuses. So I wish you all the best as you are out there motivating your teams to success. 
And if you need any other tips, if you would like to reach out to me for more information on how to motivate your team, please reach out to me either by email or at the website, tljamesenterprises.com. Take care and I will talk with you soon. Have a great week. And as always, no matter what happens, just do it regardless. No excuses.